world, my name is Christine Don, and I'm here at C2E2 with Comicsverse. I'm here with the incredibly talented Robbie Thompson, Stacy Lee, and Ian Herring, the writer, interior artist, and colorist trio behind Silk. How are you guys enjoying your time at the con so far? Uh, this is fantastic. It's the first time I've ever been to C2E2. But, uh, I hope to come back uh, next year. It's, uh, it's been a blast. A very cool vibe here, a lot of great people, and I'm um, having a good time with these two, uh, these two geniuses. I know. I've never been to C2E2 either, and so far I love it, and I definitely want to come back next year. Same answer. <laughs> um, well, I want to begin by thanking you guys so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to have an interview with us. As you can see, your table is swamped. Um, so I'm just going to start off with a question for you, Robbie. Yeah. Um, given that comics are such a visual medium, how do you, how do, how much does imagery influence you when you're writing each scene? Uh, it's a, it's a big deal. I, I, my background is TV writing, and um, when I went to school for screenwriting at USC, fight on. Um, uh, one of the things that we used to do is we did a little uh, exercise where you cut out a little square and you had to hold up a, that little square and like whatever was inside that square was telling your story visually. And I always think about that when I'm writing for comics, but honestly it's like working with great artists makes it my job a lot easier. I, I try to make sure that my, my uh, scripts for comics are laid out for like what the plot needs, but like, you know, it's really like the layout and how it's going to actually really look visually. I, I really leave up to much more talented people, that are visual artists than I am. But it's more of a kind of like a here's a suggestion, here's everything we need to hit, but it doesn't have to be hit just like that, you know. Like those certain like set pieces and things like that, I'll just be like, I literally put in the script like, have fun, Stacy. Like like you know, good luck. I I, I don't know how to do it, um, but I, I think it's a it's a collaborative process. Great. Um, and so, how much artistic freedom do you guys have as the artists and the colorists to sort of dictate the overall style of the comic? Probably too much. Um, yeah, I don't know, but his scripts are the perfect amount of information that but it still gives me room to kind of play around and see nothing too tight which is always great as an artist you want space to kind of breathe and, and imagine you know what he's writing and so far it's been really good yeah basically no you never really give much color notes actually so I can just do whatever I want <laughs> you said before that you went to school for graphic design but then you actually ended up dropping out and because you really loved animation so, um, I was wondering if there are any animated shows that, like, or comics that are currently your favorite that, like, you absolutely must plug. Oh God, here we go. <laughs> um, uh, well, I, I love a lot of anime, and people probably pick up on that. And they mention it to me all the time. My favorite series, forever and ever, is Evangelion, the original run. Really nerdy, I know. Um, I grew up watching Disney stuff. Right now, anything by Trigger, Kill a Kill, Gurren Lagann, all that jazz. That stuff's great. Um, I like American stuff too. Uh, not to knock Marvel, but I love DC Animated Universe, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, Young Justice. I hope that's coming back, right? For Netflix, is it? I don't know. They did Superboy so wrong. Yeah, they did. Oh, Teen Titans, the original. Teen Titans Go is it's cool, but I did love Teen Titans. Yes, we oh yeah. actually talked about Miyazaki at one point uh, when we were plotting out so, uh, Silk as well, and yeah. and and Kate led to a really fun moment uh, 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 from Stacy's suggestion. So yeah, it's been oh, yeah, so yeah. You pretty much everything. You're anything. literally my favorite person. I love Kill a Kill. Like people, people, fans are so decisive on that show, but like I absolutely love it. Like, and I think people, it's like kind of a show that you need to have watched a ton of anime in order yeah. to understand. Otherwise, it's just like gratuitously exactly. sexual and violent. And you kind of don't realize, initially going in, you're like, it is gratuitous, and then you realize they're kind of playing with that and turning it on its head. They're playing with the tropes that are yeah. like so prevalent in so many animes. And it's gorgeous, and it's fun. It's, it's awesome. It's misunderstood. How do you feel the art has evolved in the series, or do you think it has, or do you, are you keeping it rather consistent? Um, for my take on it, it certainly has evolved. You know, when you start out with anything and it's brand new to you, there's always a kind of learning curve and growing pains to it. And then slowly I could feel me getting more and more comfortable with Cindy and and having more of a very uh, emotional sense of how she moves and how she thinks. And then that just makes it so much easier as you go on. So it's definitely evolved. Uh, most of your colors in Silk and Miss Marvel are really sort of really remind me of the way like Art Nouveau, like that kind of coloring style, the way you play with like shapes and you break down colors. Um, can you talk a little bit about what artistic influences you had when you were coloring silk? Uh, it was actually more, sometimes going for more pop art, but mostly it's like a lot of reactionary stuff off of what Stacy draws because she does a lot of shape-based things. So 
I'm trying as little as possible to mess those up and I try not to over render things and go crazy with things um, and just sort of she adds like a lot of little spots to have fun with highlights and just reflected light and in general we don't necessarily have to be go for realism so we can just have a lot more fun to make things pop the best they can or just um, kind of recede if you need more of a quiet moment and uh, we have a lot of fun with like the daytime shifts it's like it, um, there's actually a lot of issues that start in the day and slowly shift to night as you go through the book so it, it's very like, it's very more like I think when we get a scene change so it's like you can tell the difference between the time and day and a lot of the scripts lend themselves to doing that so yeah that's one thing I noticed about the art it's actually like very vivid because of the way you use contrast but it's also very soft at the same time and that's something that I really uh, like about your your work in Silk um, so, a question for you, Robbie. Okay. Um, so, as, a minor as minority characters and storylines are sort of explored now in mainstream comics, there's always the concern with rehashing or reinforcing sort of like stereotypes about minorities. And given that, you know, Silk is Marvel's first Asian American superhero, were there any tropes or particular storylines that you were very careful or cautious to avoid? I mean, I guess there's like the, the cliches that you know about sort of, you know, intuitively. I, I think, you know, for us early on, the conversations I had with Ellie, the, our, our first editor on the book, and then uh, Nick and Devin was really more about, you know, like diversity is really important to me as a person. Uh, being able to see the world that I live in is really important in all the, the culture that I see. But I, I think it was actually Shonda Rhimes who does all like the TV shows that put it best. She, you know, she got an award for like diversifying TV and she said, that's bullshit. Like, I'm just normalizing TV. And I, I think that's the most important thing, is just to make sure that, that she's a well-rounded character no matter what. Like, our focus from the beginning was on a much more personal story and, and trying to ground it as much as possible. I mean, it's an absurd notion. You're in a bunker for 10 years, like, it's very hard to relate to. And yet, we all have had feelings of, like, being isolated and, and feeling like, you know, like a bit of an outsider. So I was really just trying to drill down on that stuff and really just trying to present a 3D character rather than, you know, one side of her or one part of her. I don't think any one part of any of us defines us and we really wanted to make sure that that was true with Cindy as well. Great answer. I just want to add on to that because I just came from the Women of Marvel panel and Marguerite Bennett said something really great about women, but it goes, it goes with any kind of, just anyone. The idea that uh, when they made characters, that, you know, the idea that for a while they would go and try to make women these just statues of perfection because they wanted to get away from how they were portrayed as props early on and you know they're very one-dimensional and then it kind of went in another dimension of they're perfect and ideal but it's so great now that it's kind of swung the pendulum swinging into the middle where it's like no people are people and there's so many different layers and levels and no one's perfect and that's the great thing about Cindy is that you know she's she's so multi-dimensional you know she's kind of dorky but she's clearly very talented but she's also not sure of herself all these things and all of that stuff's really important I feel like yeah I think all art has always been sort of reactionary like yeah. in the history of art and I have my best friend is an art history major so she makes sure to remind me of that so I think that's actually a very um, interesting thing that you said that I actually I hadn't considered before that yeah. we're sort of swinging back into like normalcy yeah, in a way it's the best way to portray anybody it's, we're all we're all the same Cindy has always been like portrayed as the first Asian American superhero but it's never been specified what Asian she is and like as an Asian American she's Korean American, she's Korean -American? Yeah. okay yeah. Korean, right? just so it means Korean. no actually it's not um, it's I not a remember. Korean she name was, uh, Dan Slott came up with her name and it was he named actually after a friend but she is Korean American okay great I just wanted to get that on record because I myself was very confused and I couldn't find any confirmation and so I was like Cindy Moon is Korean American everybody Exclusive for comics first. <laughs> I think it's on Wikipedia. It's all good. <laughs> no, I like definitely checked. No, yeah, uh, and I even checked comic book database for that, and I like couldn't right, find well, it. Well, somebody update that now. Robbie, yes, please. No, really drop the ball. On. On Finally, is there anything you can give us as a preview to what's coming up for Cindy? Yeah, we're going to be doing an event called Spider Women, um, which is uh, this is part of the cover right here, um, and. Um, it's a big, uh, giant, uh, interdimensional yarn. Um, we're going to be doing a Spider Women Alpha issue, and then each of uh, uh, Spider Gwen, Spider Woman, and Silk are going to each do like two chapters each, and then we'll do a, a Spider Woman Omega. So it'll be eight, eight uh, pieces in total. It's a really great uh, crossover because it's not just a big event; it's like a much more personal story for all the characters. I'm particularly excited about it because you know Cindy going to another dimension uh, allows her to maybe find uh, not her own family, but another version of the the Cindy Moon family. So. 
that's going to kind of tumble her down a pretty pretty intense rabbit hole and and, and some there's gonna be fisticuffs um and and, and it starts, starts with brunch i don't know why it starts with brunch but it does That's everything all good adventures do they start with brunch everything starts with, um, i so start yeah, with brunch. that starts in april and then we're gonna actually really gonna spend a lot more time with uh, uh cindy and uh and black cat and uh so that's gonna be a ton of fun as well Black Cat is one of my personal favorites. I love Black Cat. Um, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna get into uh, her a lot more and, and try to explore a lot more why she's gone so bad. Is there anything I can expect to see from Cindy from you guys? Any, I don't know, new haircuts or something? That'd be no. pretty cool. I don't know. I would like to have a lot of fun and really do some really cool stuff this time. Yeah, really make it my own. Anything new with color? Uh, we'll see what she comes up with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. All right. Perfect. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for taking some time to interview with us. Um, is there anything else you want to say to our fans at Comics First um, before we sign off? Uh, just thank you so much and thank you for you know uh, taking comics seriously. I think it's really cool. Uh, I think it's really great. Thank you. Yeah. Keep reading Silk and thanks for reading if you have been reading and if you haven't, go out and get it. Try it out. You guys are really awesome. You fans. Um, okay, great. So thank you everybody for watching. My name is Christine Don and I'm with Comicsverse here at C2E2. If you like this interview, be sure to like and subscribe to us on YouTube. So click, click, here. click. Yes, down here. Um, and you can follow us at Comicsverse.com. You can also find us on Tumblr and Facebook. Um, yeah, everywhere. we're literally, that's what you have to be nowadays. Like, like, guess, you I know, guess. 10 years ago, you didn't have to say like, like, click and subscribe yeah, or whatever. Um, thank you so much and um, have a great day, everybody.